Welcome to another Star Citizen Addicts Anonymous. I'm Nikki Batgirl D'Angelo, your host. Well, it's been two really busy days for me at work, and I stayed up way too late last night shooting this footage. I'm now trying to edit it before I have to run off to work for another 11-hour shift. Don't feel bad for me. This is my choice, and I love doing it. So, I am so happy that today is the last day of IAE because it means that we're getting close to normalcy in the verse. I love having new people that are asking all these wonderful questions about the game and are joining us as citizens, but I hate the performance and CIG really needs to think this through. And I know I've, I was very critical of them not having more company ships on the showroom floor, and I understand that would diminish performance even more with all the entities they'd have to spawn to make that happen. But I, I, I am now remembering why every year I try to come back during this time, I just leave for another three or four months, and that's because you get all excited about the game, you see all these things coming out, and new ships, and new things to do, and all you could do is just stare at an elevator button and curse at the top of your lungs that it doesn't work. Well, here's today's showroom floor. It's Anvil Aerospace, and they are one of the top producers of military hardware in the UEE. Before we get into the show, we're gonna have a burrito and some water and take care of our health. Well, we'll wait for our health later. Thank God I'm down a little bit because there's a new ship here today that will allow us to get ourselves healed. So we'll work on that in a little bit. Thank God for this water that both is water and food, which is unusual and good. All right, anyway, back to the showroom floor and the main showroom floor ship this year is none other than the Carrick. There it is. It's big, it's beautiful, it's reworked with cargo, that now opens. So the cargo doors open, but they do not descend to the floor. The Hornet Tracker is an update to the original Hornet Tracker, and the gameplay is not there right now. People have owned the ship for a long time. This is the Mark II variant. This is the latest model, and Ugo at it. It's pretty cool. It's nice. The Hornet Mark IIs are, for in all intents and purposes, some of the prettiest ships in the game. And they hold true to some of the aircraft design elements from today. This is just the regular Hornet Mark II. It's a behemoth, it's a beast. Not as potent as an F-8 Lightning, but potent enough for you to use to take advantage of completing most of your bounty hunting missions. I guess I like that Hornet too much. I stayed there for a few minutes and looked at it. Here's the Terrapin. It's controversial because of the cost of this wonderful ship, which I love. One of the best things about this is it is based on design elements of the Raptor from Battlestar Galactica. This is your tracker, like the E2C, like the, well, let's just say this is just your AWACS ship has this beautiful tracking element right in the center of the ship, enough room for two people, and hit points that will keep you in the air longer than any other fighter in the game. And it's not a fighter, it's a small ship, it's got great armor, weak firepower, but it wouldn't be out there by itself. At this point with the minor updates they've made to the Carrick, it's probably worth doing another video on it, I've seen a number of people weigh in giving their opinions. I like to give information so you can formulate your own and then give you my experience so that could help along the way. I don't like being overly critical about any ship that somebody might like because opinions are only good for one person in this world, the person that holds it. This is the Medical Terrapin. Controversy already about this ship. At first, there was not enough room for two people. Now I'm hearing about there not being a bed to log out. This ship is made for gameplay that is going to emerge over the next two years. Medical gameplay starts with the C-8R, moves into this, then the Apollo, and then into the hospital ships. I see this 
as a ship that will never fly by itself if it's in the Navy. It is a ship that is good for search and rescue, recovering down pilots, and would probably fly with a couple of Hornets or a couple of Arrows or a combination of different ships. I see this evolving over time. There's no drone play in the game, so I think this ship is a little bit hampered by that. There was some controversy over there not being enough room for two people, so they threw in a jump seat. I think what this ship really needs is a tractor beam on the door, and it needs a drone. And that will make it a single person ship that could go out, recover downed pilots or friends, and I think that the gameplay in it is going to be pretty awesome. This is the military version of the F-7A Mark II. I really love this ship. I think it's wonderful. It's fun to fly. And if you can get one, get one. In-game, preferably. But if you want to buy one, do it. It is an amazing ship to fly. Let's move on. Wow. This is the one that I scratch my head on. This is the stealth variant. I would expected it to be a black color instead of the gray. Because in space where it's dark, you don't want to give any kind of opportunity for light to reflect off a of craft so you can see it. My main issue with this ship is the engine. Whenever you see stealth aircraft in real life, there's some kind of way to hide the IR emissions of the engine. In this game, if you look at the Sabre, that happens. If you look at other stealth ships, that happens. Here, you just have this big engine. I think they could have done better. I think the design suffered from a little bit of laziness in trying to just make them all variants of the same frame. It makes it easier for them to get it out the door, but it could have had a little bit different engine na nasals, both intake and exhaust so we can have what looks like a stealth ship. Well, here we are going into one of the halls and we're gonna see a couple of really nice ships here. The Pinnacle of Fighter, and that will be the F-8 Lightning, and that's over on the right. It's a wonderful ship, it's OP as all hell, and it's fun to fly. It's expensive. You had to go through a mission structure to get it or get to a certain level in concierge status to get one. It's a nice ship. I can't say enough about it. In every one of Chris Roberts' games, there's always this end-all, be-all that takes you to the limits so you can take on every Kilrathi and I guess every Vandul solo. I don't know if you're going to be able to do that here, but the firepower of this ship seems to be unmatched. Put it on par with a glaive. You're still going to kill the glaive every time with this with a good pilot. Nice lines. Lots of rockets and missiles and bombs and guns and, well, you get the idea. Here's the Valkyrie. I have the Valkyrie livery that was given to me for volunteering at one of the citizen cons. I like the ship. We were doing some pretty fun things in it, like flying really fast over the ground and driving a cyclone out the back and seeing if you could live. Pretty cool. Some controversy here, but let's talk about the good first. Two squads, vehicles, lots of guns, support. Bring this to Jumptown. Maybe you survive. Maybe if you have enough people protecting you, you do. It's a great ship, but it has some controversy. I don't believe there's any cargo grid yet. Okay, nope, there isn't. So you could put your vehicle in there. These side door mounted guns are pretty awesome if you get a full crew, but the ship is totally open. So this is the rear entry of the ship, but the rest of the ship is open to the cargo bay. So if you take a hit, the whole ship vents all the time. Now, yes, you should be wearing a mask, but you know, sometimes you're not. So there is a potential for taking a hit, pilot, co-pilot, crew dead, and the two squads are stuck inside their doors. Oh my Lord, that could be bad. But you know, say la vie. CIG design elements, rule the roost. 
Last haul, we're gonna go in and see a couple of other ships. One of them that I have done a couple of Zero to Heroes in for myself and even tried to film one at one point. So we're gonna take a look at what's gonna be the two Pisces and a few other ships, some other fighters, because Anvil is a military-oriented company. And we have a couple of really good things here today. So we have those two Pisces in the center. But first, let's look at my favorite light ship or light fighter, the Arrow. You can fit quite a number of these in the Polaris or the Carrick or the 890 Jump or, well, you get the idea. Pretty amazing little ship. I, I think that this is one of those ships that punches way up above its size. And it looks kind of like their version of the A4 Skyhawk. And if that was the A4 Skyhawk, this would be the A6 Intruder. This is the Gladiator, a torpedo bomber, attack fighter, and if you read the lore, there was even a search and rescue version of this, but I don't know how that would work. I think this, this has size 6 torpedoes, maybe size 8, I'm not sure, but I think it's size 6. I haven't flown mine in a very long time, but I'm not getting rid of it. I love it because at one point, this ship was in popular mechanics with a cutaway view. It was a very long time ago. I think if you go online, you could look it up. So we already talked about the Terrapin. This is the entry level ship into medical gameplay. It's a C8R where the Terrapin had a tier two bed. I think this has a tier three. So you're not going to be able to heal anything but superficial wounds here, but it could be used for going out on medical beacons and at least reviving somebody healing some of their wounds and getting them back into action. This is the C8 Expedition or the C8 Pisces, one of the two. This is the ship I have taken Zero to Hero a couple of times as my starter ship and then bought new ships in the game. It's great for doing bunker missions. It's great for doing box missions. It's not great for doing hauling. There's not a lot of space for cargo inside. It's a fun ship to fly. It's small. Small cross-section, and it packs a wallop? Nope, it does not. <laughs> if you're into multi-crew ships, this Hurricane is pretty amazing. With tremendously large guns, a nice-sized turret for a gunner, lots of missiles, this thing is the heavy fighter of the UEE Navy of old. I'm not sure what the new one is. I guess it would be the Scorpius, but I don't know if that in lore is going to make it into the Navy or if it's just for militia. The stance of this ship and the performance of this ship is pretty good. Get a friend, rent this one, and have some fun. If you're in bounty hunting, this is one of the bounty hunter ships. It's the Hawk and the Anvil Hawk. It's a very weird ship to fly. Every time I've taken it out in combat, one of these wings has always been shot off. But you stick your prey, your bounty, in the back of the ship in some kind of coffin-like structure. This is just a nice looking ship. I don't know what else to say. If you buy it, it's probably going to be for hangar candy because I think in its class there's probably some far better ships. We're going to have to take that one out again just to see how well it performs. That might be a ship that you work for or work towards in-game. We are descending to the lower floor of the IAE showroom, and we're going to see some things down here, but what I'm going to tell you is I'm not going to stop and talk about vehicles. I think vehicle gameplay, it's been interesting watching how people use these items, but I just don't think that they're anything that you should buy right now with dollars and cents. I think having a ship that can get you from A to B in the game is a little bit better, but that is definitely something that is useful in Jump Town and also into org battles that I've seen some people having on YouTube. Now, when I came in here and they said that this first ship was the Paladin, nope, yeah, it, it may be, but it doesn't look like the ship I saw in game. I think this is either the Crucible or Liberator. I don't think they have the right model in here. I think the Hollows are all messed up in this hall today because multiple things are called the Crucible 
and I see the same ship over and over again. The Paladin looks a little bit more stocky and a little bit more like brute, like brute force. And this looks elegant. So I believe that the hollows are broken today. So we're going to walk through it and I'm not going to try to say which is which because everything seems to be broken. But this over here, I think this was the Paladin to be honest. No, that's... This one is probably the Liberator, and the other one was... I don't know, this, maybe this is a Crucible, and that was... Like I said, without it telling me what it is, I'm a little confused, and I think they are broken, and if they're not, I'll make it up to you guys somehow. Anyway, the concept ship released today, we're going to talk about in another video. It's the Anvil Paladin. It's a gunship. It is a competitor to the Redeemer. It is a competitor to... I guess there's nothing else out there. Like, the other gunship I would think of is the Perseus. But I think that's in a totally different class. Like, that, that is a gunship that takes out small capital ships. Where the Paladin is going to be the one that gets you to the ground, right? It's supporting the Valkyrie. It's clearing the way for troops to land on the ground. Or for this thing to attach itself to a hull and breach, this is a breach ship, I know that much, and breach into that ship and take it over. So the gunship that they're releasing is, it's cheaper than the Redeemer, it has tons of guns, looks like it's gonna be a lot of fun, it carries a crew of four, and already people are trying to say, is it worth it, is it not worth it, is it good, it's not good, and what I'm gonna say is, I am never gonna give an opinion of a ship that I haven't seen, walked through, flown and used in its intended role so when you buy a concept ship you are supporting the game period end of sentence do not buy concept ships because you like the ship so we will do a paladin video and we will take a look at what its role is going to be and how it fits into the current arsenal the current lineup that anvil offers all right this is it. This is the last day of IAE for me. I will be here tomorrow and talk about the ships a little bit that are in the Best In show. But I think this is the last big day. So if you like this video, please click the thumbs up button below. If you subscribe or are a subscriber, be sure that you have clicked that bell-shaped icon and chosen all so you get notified of all my future videos. If you do want to join the game, look in the description below for my referral code it will get you an extra 5000 uec and potentially a free ship or some stuff later on and with that said as we bid adieu to anvil y'all be safe out there and i'll talk to you soon thank you so much for watching my videos you can subscribe to my channel by clicking in the button in the upper left you can support the channel by going to patreon by clicking the button in the upper right on the left, you'll see my latest video, and on the right, you'll see a video that YouTube thinks you will like.